Okay, this is the P3 paper from June 2022. This is question number five here. Uh, as you can see by looking at it, this is a functions and graphs question. In particular, it's a modulus function style question. Uh, we're going to be solving some modulus problems. We're going to be combining some transformations. And then this last part really is quite tricky when we get that far. But let's at least make a start to it. So part A, A part one and part two. Now you could do both of these very much algebraically. I'm going to do them in the same style I always do these questions. What they want to know is the y coordinate of A there and they want to know the x coordinate of B here. And for example, with the y coordinate of A, you could just put x equals naught in there and we're going to get modulus, well, we're going to get modulus minus 9, minus 2, we're going to get 9 minus 2, we're going to get 7. So you could just do it really, really quickly straight away. But I'm going to sketch the graph of um, modulus kx minus 9, minus 2 anyway, because I need it later on and I, it gives me a better understanding of what I'm doing. And that that's the way I would look at most of these sort of style of questions, is if they give me the graph already drawn out, I say, let's try and draw it and then I can work or sketch it, then I can work out these values. So because I normally do it in that way, I'm going to do it in that way here, but I do appreciate the fact you could do parts A and B, or A certainly, a little bit quicker. Okay, having said all that, let's, let's stop waffling, get on with it. So if I'm going to draw this out, the way that I would do part A then is that what I would say is, can I build up Y equals modulus KX minus 9 minus 2? And as I said, previously then, this is a good uh, method that will work for the majority of questions and is really showing your understanding of these modulus functions. So if I want to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start and build it. So I'm going to say, what does y equals kx look like? Well, it doesn't matter what k is, this is still going to be a line that goes through the origin that's a straight line. So I can sketch y equals kx. And if I can sketch y equals kx, I can then sketch y equals kx minus 9. Because kx minus 9 is simply going to move down 9 units. And let's just move it over so it looks reasonable on my graph here. But all I've done is I've moved that graph down 9 units. So if I've moved it down 9 units, and that was at the origin, that's now there. What's this value here going to be? Well, let's have a look. This is where... The graph of kx minus 9, it's when y equals naught. So that's going to give me kx equals 9, or rather x equals 9 over k here. So we now know that this value is 9 divided by k. And this minus 9, it, it, it doesn't matter what k is, that's, that's going to be at minus 9. There, That's going to be important for later. Uh, now, what do we want to do? That's um, kx minus 9. I now want to do the modulus of kx minus 9. And if you've done work on this, then you, you should be happy that what that means is that the line is reflected about the x-axis here. There will not be any negative values. So give me a second to just get rid of those then. So everything underneath the curve here this bit is going to disappear. But when it does disappear, we know this has been reflected. So that's still useful because it tells me that that value there would now be hitting at 9. And again, doesn't matter what k is, that's definitely true so far for the modulus of kx minus 9. And now the only other thing we've got to do with it is we've got to take away 2 from it. So if we take away 2, then this whole graph needs to drop down by two units now let's just make it let's just make sure that i don't get this in the way so i'm going to put that up there for the time being when this whole graph moves down by two units let's just say it's there for example okay this is still nine over k that hasn't moved so i'm happy that that value there is nine over k this value has moved it's moved down two units now so instead of being nine this value now is going to be seven 
this value also has moved down two, so this is gonna be minus two here. Okay, now that, that's key for later on. So let me just quickly go through this while I'm tidying up my presentation. Now, um, in terms of what we have, I just leave it like that. That will be the answer that the examiner would see. But from my point of view, what's really, really interesting or important is that independent of what K is, it's still going to hit at seven and it's still going to be touching there at minus two. I don't know how far along it's going to touch at minus two, but it's still going to hit at minus two. Those two are now um, set. Right, so that's really helpful for later on. But in terms of um, part A, part A said, what's the Y coordinate of A? Yep, well, we've got that. So we just want to make that clear then. Y coordinate of A is equal to 7. And part 2, the value here, uh, do they label it? Yeah, B. So you can put A and B on, I guess, A and B, the X value for B is equal to 9 over K. So I'll make it really clear to the examiner that I've actually answered that question. OK, part B, find in terms of K the range of values of X that satisfy the inequality, this less than zero. Well, because this is the graph, where is the graph less than zero? We're talking about, uh, let's highlight it, we're talking about in here, aren't we? That's where the graph is less than zero. So what I really need to do now, oops, is to work out what's this point and what's this point. And then it's going to be, x will be in between those two. Well, those two points are just where the function equals zero. So let's do that part b. The function is kx minus 9 minus 2, I'm going to work out where it equals 0 first, and then I'll be able to say that less than 0 is between the two values. This is just a simple modulus problem to solve. The easiest way to do this is to say, take the 2 over, and then we can just say, all oh, right, kx minus 9 is either 2 or minus 2. That's how you get the modulus working out to be equal to 2. So kx minus 9 is equal to 2, or kx minus 9 is equal to minus 2. Let's just solve those two things independently. kx is equal to 9 plus 2, 11. x is going to be 11 over k, or kx minus 9. Oops, sorry. kx is equal to minus 2 plus 9, that's 7. So x is equal to... 7 over k. So if we go back and just look at the diagram then, this one is 7 over k and this one is 11 over k. So if that's the situation, I'm not going to pull that on the diagram, the diagram will get too messy, then for my graph to be below the axis, to be less than naught, it's going to be less than 11 over k but greater than 7 over k. So again, if I've done the answer, just make it really clear that I've finished for that part. Okay, part C. <laughs> I've done a couple of hundred videos now, and this is probably one of the most difficult to explain. It's not necessarily a really, really difficult question. Well, it's not straightforward, but trying to explain it to you guys is a little bit of a challenge. Right, so I'm going to take a bit of time over this. First of all, what are they asking us? They're saying we've got a graph y equals 3 minus 2x, and it's going to hit our current graph at two different points has to hit at two points. So if I've got 3 minus 2x, just really, really quickly, but I'm going to go through this in a bit more detail. 3 minus 2x, I know, is a straight line with a negative gradient, and I know it's hitting at the point 3 there. So basically, this is what I've got, is this blue line here. And what they want to know, oops, sorry, what they want to know is when does it hit at two? So it hits at two points there, hits at two points there, hits at two points there, depending on what this gradient is, of course. But where does it hit there? Because anything below that, and it's going to miss, isn't it? We're going to have it that it's just missing there. Well, the 3 minus 2x is fixed. It's actually going to be this one that's changing all the time, and it's changing depending on k. 
So I need to have a better understanding of what, what's actually going on with that before we can... We, I don't want really you making any assumptions here. So let's just spend a little bit of time. Sorry, let's turn my graph paper back to... Pencil back to purple, easy to say. Right, so we've got our set of axes here. Now, what do I know about this graph? Y equals modulus kx minus 9 minus 2. Well, as I said earlier, we know that it's fixed up here at 7, going through that coordinate. And we know that it's going to hit along the line minus 2 somewhere. So it's, it could be here, it could be here, it could be here. I don't know where it's going to be along there, but I know that that's fixed. Let's just get rid of those bits there. Leave the minus 2 in. And obviously I know it's a modular graph. So one possibility could then be if I go through there, through the 7, let's say it hits at that point there. Well then, because we know it's a modulus graph, that's going to look like that. Well, what's an alternative? A, a, a different one then would be, okay, still goes through minus 7. Okay, so make sure it goes through the minus 7. But it's still got to stop there. Oh, so what's happened to this thing Oops. is that the V, if we consider the shape, the V will get narrower and narrower. Well, no, not, not narrower. We'll get wider and wider and wider as this point moves further and further away. If, if I could draw another one on, it's not going to fit, but if I tried to draw one, say, that hit over there, then I'd be saying, right, okay, that one there is going to go right off the charts, isn't it? It's going to go over there. Alternatively, of course, and again, I won't necessarily leave this one on, but it could be really narrow here. And then do something like that. Okay, so that, that's what's happening as I change my K. Well, what am I changing my K? My K here, remember, is the gradient. If it's Kx minus 9, it's the gradient here. So... This is K being large. And actually, as we go further and further along here, K is getting smaller and smaller and smaller because it's getting um, less steep. It's getting less steep as we go along there. So this is K getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Right, we needed to have an understanding of all of that then but not necessarily write any of it down, just, just trying to explain it to you guys, because what I can now do is, let's just make this, let's get rid of a few of these bits and pieces. Let's say that I've got, I've got those three here. What about the line y equals three minus two x? Well, as we said to you just a minute ago, I'm gonna draw this in a different color, just so that we can see it. Y equals three minus two x has to go through three, and it's got a gradient of minus two x. So if I fix that, okay, and I say that's what it looks like, y equals 3 minus 2x, then as this thing is changing, is it this graph? Is it this graph? Is it that graph? I will get to a point, and this is why I've done this on purpose, uh, of the final one that I just said here, there will, will be a point here where that becomes vital. That particular point there becomes vital because we're, I'm happy that on the black graph here, yep, it hits at two points. If I look at the second graph over, yep, it hits at those two points. Keep going, keep going, keep going till I get to this situation Anything more than that, anything where, where the gradient is changing, we'll get a flatter graph. And if I just quickly do one in, let's do it in red so that we can actually see. If I have a graph that goes through the 0.7, but hits there now, that is not now meeting, the two graphs are not now meeting at two points. 
So all of that, that's taken me a long time to do, all of that is to basically explain that this then becomes the key point, okay? If the gradient moves past this point here, if k is bigger than this there, then there's not going to be two points of intersection. Wow. Right, having said all that then, so that's B, isn't it? That's B from my original, let's turn it back to purple now. This is B on my original graph. So point B becomes a limit. And what I need to do is to find out where point B is. Well, point B, we already know something about point B. We know it's minus 9 over, uh, sorry, we know it's um, 9 over K here and minus 2. That's point B there. So if I now say that we know that's the coordinate, that's going to be the coordinate also for the graph y equals 3 minus 2x. So if I say, whoops, let's do it here, sorry. If I say y equals 3 minus 2x, and I know that y is equal to minus 2, and x is going to be equal to 9 over k, I can work out what k is going to be from that. Let's just tidy that all up. I'm going to get, um, take the 2, 9 over k over this side and take the 3 plus 2 over that side. I'm going to get that 18 over k is equal to 5. I'm going to get that k is equal to 18 divided by 5. k equals 3.6. So what that means, going back to this explanation again, is if I set k equal to, I don't know, 10, I'm going to get a really steep graph with a gradient of 10. If I set k equal to 5, I'm going to get that situation. The difference between those two graphs is that the function has moved along this axis, this point has moved along this axis as k has got less. If I hit this point here, I know this is when k equals 3.6 then. Anything further than there, and I will not get two distinct points. So k has got to be this side, which means k has got to be greater than 3.6. Now, you may well need to look at that explanation a couple of times there because it's really quite complicated. It's only worth three marks, so for some of you, just ignore it. You know, don't watch that part of the video again. Were you okay with parts A and B? But I know we have some superstars in here who are looking at getting 100% and A stars and what have you. Uh, if that's a the situation, then that's how you do that question. Okay, hopefully that makes sense.